Wolfman Jack was a legendary DJ who rose to prominence during the 1960s as one of the world's first shock jocks. While Wolfman Jack wasn't nearly as controversial during his radio days as later shock jocks like Howard Stern, he still knew how to titillate the listening audience. With his rock and roll programming and trademark Wolf Howl, Wolfman Jack became an iconic figure on the radio before being immortalized on screen with his performance as a fictionalized version of himself in George Lucas's nostalgic master masterpiece American Graffiti. Today, the Wolf Man is no longer with us, and those who wish to pay their respects to him by visiting his grave are going to have a hard time doing so thanks to its private location. Join Facts First as we explore why Wolf Man Jack's grave is a depressing sight for fans. Many celebrities get big, open graves that fans can visit to pay respects to their late idols. Sadly, this wasn't the case for legendary DJ Wolfman Jack. Upon the Wolfman's passing in 1995, he was buried in the front yard of his home in North Carolina. Prior to his death, Wolfman Jack shared the home with his wife. That wife was Lou Smith, to whom the Wolfman had been married since 1961. There are other celebrities that have been buried in the beautiful state of North Carolina, including Andy Griffith, Ava Gardner, Reverend Billy Graham, and Andre the Giant. But Wolfman may be the celebrity figure who has the least open North Carolina grave, with the majority of the other figures having easy locations for fans to visit. Though fans may be upset about the lack of ceremony surrounding the Wolfman's grave, it's what he wanted. Although Wolfman Jack loved sharing his iconic voice and visage with fans during his lifetime, what he truly cared about was his personal life with his family on his North Carolina property. Although the grave of Wolfman Jack isn't open to the public, it is still a loving tribute to the celebrity DJ, who entertained audiences for so many years. The headstone itself is adorned with a variety of his most memorable phrases. Those who wish to pay their respects to Wolfman Jack can do so from the road, with his grave being located near the Perquimans River. But if visitors truly wish to be respectful, they'll keep off his property. While fans may not be able to get up close and personal with Wolfman Jack's grave, they can get acquainted with his life story. Wolfman Jack was born in 1938, and he first became interested in the prospect of radio broadcasting when his father bought him his very own transoceanic radio. Given that his parents separated when he was still young, this radio provided him a healthy outlet for his emotions. It was the transoceanic radio from his father that provided young Wolfman Jack with his very first radio experience. Anyone who was a teen during that decade knows the name Wolfman Jack from his days as a radio DJ, even if many subsequent generations only know him from his performance in American Graffiti. Wolfman Jack wasn't born with his iconic name, but rather Robert Weston Smith. Young Robert knew that if he wanted to break out into the competitive world of radio, he'd need a better name. It was because of this that the name Wolfman Jack was born. Alongside his new name, young Robert also came up with the idea of howling like a wolf as his radio signature. With his new name and his new gimmick, Wolfman Jack took the world by storm over the course of the 60s. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. And stick around for more about Wolfman Jack. With his iconic name and howl, Wolfman Jack broke onto the radio scene in the early 60s and started catching the attention of the public in a big way. In addition to his name and his gimmick, the Wolfman also had an edgy attitude that stuck out in the days when he came on the air. In many respects, Wolfman Jack has come to be seen as one of the very first shock jocks. While the standards of the day didn't allow Wolfman Jack to get away with very much risque behavior on the airwaves, he still had a generally adult demeanor that appealed to the increasingly radical youth of the time. To many, Wolfman Jack became a venerated symbol of early 1960s counterculture. Some examples of his risque humor included when he would suggest to audiences listening in the privacy of their own homes to get naked while doing so, and he would instruct them to, quote, play with his knobs by adjusting the dials on their radio. With his winning personality and risque humor, it was no surprise when Wolfman Jack became one of the most popular DJs of the 60s. Despite the mainstream success he went on to receive, Wolfman first rose to fame thanks to his work on the radio station XERFAM, broadcast from Mexico. The standards at the time were more lenient on programs broadcast out of Mexico, which allowed the Wolfman to be a bit more experimental. 
Although it was technically a Mexican radio station Wolfman was being broadcast from, the signal was so strong it could be picked up all the way across America. During the height of his popularity on XERF, it was said American drivers could travel all the way from California to New York without losing the signal. In fact, there were even times during the day when it was said the signal could be picked up in parts of Europe. The immense power of the radio signal being broadcast from Mexico allowed Wolfman Jack to pick up a massive following. This only grew bigger when he made a revolutionary deal with the government of the U.S. to have his radio programs syndicated to troops across the world. The deal was made via Armed Forces Network. As a result, Wolfman Jack's radio programs helped entertain American troops during the Vietnam War. While this might have hurt the Wolfman's image as a figure in the counterculture of the time, it greatly increased his mainstream fame. It's been said that at the peak of Wolfman Jack's radio career, he was being broadcast on more than 2,000 radio stations, with his global range spanning more than 50 countries. From his decidedly modest origins as a shock doc DJ operating out of Mexico, Wolfman Jack found himself a full-blown legend entering into the 1970s. Having completely taken over the radio during the 60s, he set his sights on the screen in the 70s. In 1973, he became immortalized thanks to his performance as a fictionalized version of himself in American Graffiti. The nostalgic film took place in the early 60s and was directed by George Lucas, who had listened to Wolfman Jack on the radio for years. Then he could be seen on the programs Married with Children and Ship Happens over the course of the next decades. After nearly six decades of life, Wolfman Jack passed away in 1995 at age 57. It was said to have been from a heart attack, and his wife and two children survived him. His death occurred a month after the release of his autobiography called Have Mercy, Confessions of the Original Rock and Roll Animal. A year later, he was posthumously inducted into the Radio Hall of Fame. Wolfman's daughter, Joy Renee Smith, followed up in her father's footsteps by becoming a DJ herself, taking on the name Joy Jack. Sadly, Joy passed away only a few years after her father in a car crash. She was buried alongside her father in the late Wolfman's aforementioned property in North Carolina. Now it's time to hear from you. Did you know Wolfman Jack is routinely considered to be one of the first shock jocks in the history of radio? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.